This is Orson Welles again. You've been watching a program of magical illusions. For contrast, I will attempt not a magic trick, but an experiment in that new frontier of human knowledge still referred to as the paranormal. The secret is sealed and locked into this today. Powerful message. Amen. I thank the Lord for Robert Milton coming this morning, seven years old. He trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior this week. He's been asking questions at home and uh, and you and Rhonda were able to sit down with him with the Bible and show him how to be saved. And he's coming this morning to make that public. And he's going to follow the Lord in baptism next Sunday morning. Amen. He wanted to Wanted his grandpa to be here with him when he got baptized, and I think that's going to happen next Sunday. Praise God for that. Robert, thank you for trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. Mm -hmm. that's All right. Um, <clears throat> be seated for just a moment, please. Let me give you just a word of explanation and instruction here as to what we're going to do. By the way, <clears throat> uh, if you're visiting with us today, you're welcome join us for dinner over at the Fellowship Hall. We're going to be dismissed here in just a minute. And in fact, we would like for you to join us this morning, uh, this afternoon, and uh, for a time of fellowship and food. And, and uh, <clears throat> hopefully we have plenty of it over there. I haven't noticed, but uh, we normally do. And uh, we want you to feel free to, to join with us. And there are six lines, uh, serving lines. And uh, so just Go through the doors back here, follow the crowd, and uh, get in one of those six lines and help yourself to food. There's overflow seating in both the chapel area and also in the pavilion. So if we fill up the fellowship hall, we've got plenty of room. And there are beverage tables on each end of the fellowship hall and in the chapel. So get your food and maybe you can find a place at the table and then uh, go get your beverage. And you'll find it on either end of the fellowship hall or in the chapel, wherever you may be seated. I'm going to ask <coughs> Brother Yost, um, Jan, why don't, why don't you, uh, Jenny, can you, can you uh, play the piano and let Jan take Dr. Yost over to um, Fellowship Hall? We want to feed you. Are you hungry? <laughs> <All right. laughs> <coughs> and Joy and Gary, um, Will you join them, please? Just mm -hmm. slip out as we go. Now, I'm going to stand in just a moment and yeah, yeah. thank the Lord for his provision. We're going to on the one at a time. But, uh, <coughs> we want our guests to go first and uh, get the best please. seat and the best food. That that'll work, won't it? you agree with that? Yeah. 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 Let's stand together and uh, pray. Father, thank you for moving in hearts this morning. Thank you, Lord, for Robert for him getting saved this week. I pray, God, that we'll see him grow in grace and knowledge of Christ. Put your hand upon him. Use him, Father, much for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for these others who've come today for various reasons. I pray that you'll just meet their needs. Lord, thank you for the message. Father, <clears throat> we pray that you'll bless our time of fellowship together around the various tables. Bless our conversation. May it glorify Christ. We thank you for the food that's been provided. <coughs> We ask God that you would nourish us with it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen.
comical on the camera. I got Mike Rock being comical too. And Mark Taylor. Mark Taylor goes, Hi mom, I'm Matt. Hi dad. And Mrs. I was Mrs. Graff, she's sticking her tongue in the camera and stuff like that. I get everybody. Geller said that he thought it was real. Oh, here, you can have my little I have to admit, it does give the illusion that it is real. Oh, I can see how Rusty got sick. Got illusion wise. But a couple of says illusion wise. Brian, what? Level three can't go to the Jurassic Park level, to, but you can go to level five higher up in Jurassic Park. There you go. Level five. Top security area 51. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go. Oh, man. You mean Cheryl don't want on camera? Man, come on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I do Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
some stupid china out of that. I can't believe you went and took my silverware. <laughs> doing camera, I'm doing tricks. What? You didn't take the first sip. You didn't take the first sip. Sure. So why are you asking me why I threw it away then? If you didn't like it, you weren't going to eat it. Put it down, boy. <laughs> Wave to the camera. <laughs> I got you on camera. See, that's that's a, just a, a normal pose, but I got you a natural pose too. Yeah. Right. Got you in your natural habitat. Yep. Not even paying oblivious to the fact that the camera is filming. That's the best kind of like natural, and they don't know the point, so they just be what they want. Because you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. if they know they're on camera, it's just they're yeah. not themselves. Yeah, you know? I might change. Yeah. It's like I did my. I forgot to tell you on Twitter, buddy. When uh, Tommy had. This story had Come here. our niece and nephews over, along with his niece and nephews, on the day after, around after Easter, they had like uh, the kids out out of school for a week. So she and my, um, Andy's mom enjoyed it. So did uh, my sister Cheryl. She enjoyed it. And uh, went to McDonald's, did activities, and then came back and played PlayStation 2 games. But what they don't know, I had the camera sitting right on the TV, hooked it to my VCR. According to Coward's worth of them going wacky, uh, fighting over the games. They don't even know that the camera's recording. It's right there in front of them in plain sight. That's great. I was like, oh man, that's so amazing. Alan! 
Hey, man. How's it going, bro? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, no. Uh -uh. I got everybody doing that. I got uh, Miss Graff and all that doing that stuff. So. Well, some mouths that. are bigger than others, bro. Oh, man. I even got Mike Rock in the car going like this. Mike Rock's in the car going like this. Mm. Yeah, Tommy couldn't come because his back's bad and he's got severe, uh, he had a, a severe uh, migraine headache. Are you going to take him home and play? <laughs> you better now because it's on tape. Uh, <laughs> so very funny. Yeah, he always gets tabs first for anybody else, uh, whatever I record. I think he's faster than you, Rusty. He, this might be faster. Oh, oh man. Hey. Ow. Ow is right. Ow. Hey, right. Thing is, I don't know what Tommy likes. I'll probably give him a whole bunch of plate of stuff he don't even want. Here's one. I found one. Now. And then back to say, what about me? And then I'll go, uh oh. Sometimes it's hard to find one. Clever. Hey! Hey, don't you just don't throw away a full leaf clever like that. Is it, is it really a full clever? Two of them, baby. Oh, okay. Two of Two full leaf clever. One, two. That's right. See? You got one, Daddy. yeah. two, three, four, and then you got one, Daddy. two, three, and four. Daddy. Everybody's real good at that. I got I got lucky and one time I did it and I was like Oh boy, and I couldn't find, and then I found a fire loop club, and they said, sorry, that ain't good luck, throw it away, okay. Uh, uh, I was like, I was like, well, that'd be a rare one. <laughs> yeah, that is a rare one, I don't think I've ever seen a fire loop club. Oh, it was in Lancaster, Ohio, uh, up in the North School, and it has a mountain there, you can see it, and, and like it's a park, like take a park there, but it's got a mountain you can climb, yeah, in Lancaster, Ohio, that's where I really like home. The, uh, Shane, come here. The, uh, um, I had a Tom Sawyer book that I got for my birthday. Come here. And I put the three leaf clover in that, and it, it, it just stayed stiff and everything. But then later on, I gave the book away, and now there's somewhere someone's going to open it up. Oh, a three leaf clover inside that Tom Sawyer book. Yeah, that's what I did. I, I'm like, I'm fine. I, uh, sometimes you get them on the key, man. Sometimes you been out here looking like, wow, that is. Shane, come here. Just got to eye it right. I was telling I'll you find what. five of them in like 10 minutes. Man, you got good ego eye. That's good. The, uh, Oh, that's really man. Way over there. The, um, um, I was telling uh, everybody that May the 1st, Papa is going to be a Christ Papa 530, 830 show. There's two out of show, each, each one. And I was just looking to find out the CBS special. And all of a sudden, I typed in 2005 CBS David Copperfield. And Thank you, and Instead of coming up with CBS TV special, it came up Chrysler Hall, 2005. I click onto it. It says, get your tickets now, 530, 830 show. 
so I called, I told him the story, and she got the tickets um, at uh, Farm Fresh, the ticket master up there, and we, we got the 530 show. It'll be me, then Tommy. Well, actually, this is how the setting is. Tom, Tommy's got it set out. Tommy, then Banshee, then Andy, then his friend Darius. So, and then me off, and then me. That's five. We'll be in balcony, somewhere middle, midway in balcony seats, which is what I like, because I can see the see the secret illusion with the binoculars. But, um, the, um... Well, so good, you know, really. He's been to him before, but every time I ask him, he uh, he's usually busy due to his work. He, wor he works uh, late at nights now, so he used to not work just during the day and get off at night, but his work schedule is... Is he married? Yeah, Bob Schofield? Is he? Yeah, his wife is Judy Schofield. He's got a special son named Peter, an older daughter. I know Peter. I've seen, I know who Peter is. Why does, Leslie... I've never seen his wife with him. His le well, she's got... Well, she used to have acid reflux like I got, but she had it... But only she was born without a sarcophagus, we call that. And eventually she had to get, uh, like, a man-made one or something. And, and then she had to take tubes to shrink her throat and all that. And she gets weak and weak during the flu and all that stuff. But and she pulls through. It, it, and she's got to take air tanks and all this stuff. And sometimes she'll come to church and, and you I mean, and like I got her on the city park thing. It's very rare. And, and you would never know that she's in pain. She, and Bob said, well, that's because she covers, covers, it, covers it well. Man. Bob is trying to hold down the hold down the fort. Yeah, um, Leslie is his older daughter. And she she works off to the side. She comes once in a while. She used to go to the Wild Christian camp, but now she's at the age where she just got her job a job somewhere. And how old is she? Um, I wouldn't even say 18, 19. I don't know, but she's old enough to drive. How old that is, I don't know. Sixteen. Sixteen. Sixteen is usually an age for. see the lights flicking that usually the pastor or Mark would say, oh, time to Tommy's got more information on it. You wouldn't believe. Tommy, Tommy your brother? 
No, he's a friend of mine in school. But she, um... He usually comes here, I mean. Yeah, he comes here. See, he used to go to Sweet Home Baptist with his, where his parent, parents went, Mr. and Mrs. Story, Donna Story and Robert Story. And then later on, that he went to our church when Pastor Palmer was here to uh, inspiration. Eventually, he just uh, stayed. And then the, um, there were no teens in that faculty over there, so they moved over here. So the, Tommy wanted to be with the teens and all that stuff. It's kind of fun because I used to do inspiration with Mark Taylor. I used to go there too. But um, Mark Taylor would still have me there, but his wife says, He's out. He's old. You don't need to be in this class. You need to get in the adult class. Yeah. But, uh, how old are you? Well, I'm 39 now. Oh, uh, really? When I was about 25, it, uh, I, I went in, um, oh, I can't think of his name right now. Not Dan Hamburg, but um, oh, one of the guys, not Dave Sevier, but Dave, Dave Clark's work. What is it? Yeah. I was in his class. And then I was when the other guy named Jeff, 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 Jeff oh man, something named Jeff, he did the, um, the, art, the, uh, I can't think of that, the, 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 Jeff, he did the Sunday morning, and his brother Carrie did the other one about the mixed army, navy thing, or whatever, military week, yeah, military appreciation week, Jeff, I can't think of his name right now, but he was in that war recently. And I think he was in Desert Storm, too. And that's one of the famous ones. He was too cool. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Anyway. Jeff Stark, that's it. Anyway, um... Tommy knows in information on that real good. Um... He knows the answers before they come out. It's amazing how he knows that. I'm into magic, like he's into Star Trek and Star Wars and all that. The, um, although I'm into Battlestar Galactica a lot. The, um, the original series, that is. No, no offense to the other. The I'm into the too. But, um, I was reading up on it, and what was interesting is that when Return of the Jedi was out, they, they were saying that it was Revenge of the Jedi. Yeah, it was Revenge of the Jedi. And I was thinking, yeah. Why would he say that? Why would a Jedi have revenge? But I thought, well, maybe he wanted to do it that way. I don't know. But later on, I found out that George Lucas didn't like these pyrite of people who take and make their own posters with their own own flyers and, say George, and print George Lucas on it. And, and he was able to catch all the bad guys saying revenge of the Jedi when he knew the answer was really the return of the Jedi. He was able to get them. Yeah, it used to be called uh, Revenge of the Jedi. Yeah, I mean, the, um, I bet you it comes out of Alex. So they got and um, it was instead of Return of Kong, it was going to be Revenge of Kong. But uh, when Star Trek, uh, with Kong, Kong comes back, so uh, George Lucas started a, a, a interesting thing. But eventually, yeah. they, he explained the reason why he didn't, he didn't want the people to copy right. Like, he wanted to see how many were making uh, fake pirate copies. That's pretty interesting, actually. Yeah. I got Mark Taylor coming right up to the camera and singing the song right in there. We're going to Spanish church. Yeah. You know that. I said, you ain't the only one. Mark Taylor sticking his tongue out. There you go. Say hi. Hi. You don't know what to think.
Oh, Jeff's doing the Fox on him. From Star Trek. Dad did to the camera? Came up to it and lick it with his tongue.
That's all that played through those he had in the No, but if I had the camera, I'd be with them here right now. Good evening. That's We're it. It's the 50th anniversary of the Christ Number 391 in your hymnal. Number 391, I am resolved no longer to linger. Charm of the world's delight. Number 391, let's all stand to sing. I didn't get them. Those digestive juices flowing. I didn't get a chance to get them. Next month, right? May 9th. May 9th. May 9th. May 9th. That's next month. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good to see you, Phil and Melody and Kitch. Phil, would you open our afternoon service in prayer, please? Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. You take your hymnal again. We'll let you sit down as we sing number 483. 483. Like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. Overall victorious in its bright increase. Number 483. Remain seated as we sing. Okay, so the secret stealth technology, does that mean the plane can really become invisible? On radar, it's very difficult to do. Okay, just concrete, under the floor, all concrete. Okay, so the secret stealth technology, does that mean the plane can really become invisible? On radar, it's very difficult to detect, but not with the human eye. We don't have that kind of technology yet. Okay, folks, it's time to make the stealth bomber disappear. This is the Matchy shot. From this point on, we won't cut away, so don't go to the fridge now. Banishing the B-2 is obviously a very big job. That's why I've enlisted some support from the United States Air Force. We're moving some heavy military equipment in behind the B-2. That will prevent the plane from moving off in that direction. Blocking the sides will be 40 airmen stationed here at Edwards Air Force Base. Each of them will be holding a large panel. I'll be standing behind this exhaust shield, not to protect me, but because I have a few top secrets of my own to protect, like how to vanish the stealth bomber. Operations ago, close the doors. Now remember folks, since we walked away from right beneath the plane, this camera has not cut away. Here it is, the world's first truly invisible airplane.
all been waiting for, how to make a 110,000-pound army tank disappear. Other magicians have made large fixed objects vanish, like national landmarks, hotels, and even airplanes. But no matter what the object, they always perform the trick the same way. The tank rolls into position, and the engine is shut down. It would take nearly five full minutes to fire the tank back up so it could move again. So you know it couldn't just drive away. While the math magician inspects the tank, his assistants begin to lock it down with heavy chains. The magician makes sure the chains are secured while the assistants move to the front of the tank where they attach still more chains. The chains are bolted to the ground. The tank is now completely locked down. The magician walks under the 20-foot long cannon and takes one last look at the tank. Everything is set. In order to pull off this amazing illusion, the magician needs a little help from this magical picture frame. There are no camera cuts or special effects involved in the creation of this illusion. I can assure you that this is one continuous shot. We have merely gone from a wide angle to a close-up. He reaches through the magical picture frame to prove that this isn't merely a painting or a mirror. It isn't. As he pulls down the shade, you can see that it has a drawing of a tank on it, and not a particularly good one. Let me assure you the tank is bolted down and couldn't be moved in this amount of time. Presto. The tank has vanished. Where did it go? The magician walks over to the area where the tank used to be. How is it possible to make something that weighs 55 tons disappear into thin air, and so quickly? Don't worry. We'll let you in on the secrets. This is one disappearing act that is not done with smoke and mirrors. Here are the secrets. Once it is chained down, the tank never moves. Believe it or not, it stays in the exact same spot. This is the key to the trick. When we pull back, the secret is suddenly revealed. While the tank remains stationary, everything else moves. The magician, the camera, and the picture frame. They are all on top of a specially built platform that sits on wheels, so it can roll from its position in front of the tank to a matching location without the tank. You never feel the movement because everything is traveling together. Sometimes this trick is performed with a live audience present. I can tell you now that they are always in on it. When the shade is pulled, the assistants have only a few seconds to scramble into their new positions. Everything looks the same. The lights, the chains, the assistants. But the tank is now gone. Of course, we know that it's right where it was when the trick began just 20 feet away. Here you can see the two identical locations. And that's how to make an army tank disappear, or any other large object. If you want to know more of Magic's biggest secrets, call 1-800-230-5557 for a video cassette of tonight's program. If you order now, you will also receive a never-before-seen bonus trick. So call 1-800-230-5557. And the secrets of magic will be revealed. Has never been completely tested. David Copperfield is going to try to make a seven-ton jet disappear. Because of the magnitude of the illusion and the uncertainty of its success, what we are about to see is one of the great moments in the history of magic. Never before has anyone tried to make anything this big disappear. Time now for the biggest challenge ever faced by the magic of David Copperfield.
airport right outside our studio. Now, the reason I'm at an airport is because the size of our next illusion would be impossible to perform indoors. Now, I want to remind all of you that everything you see tonight is exactly the way you would see it if you were standing right here with me. Now, what you see behind me is a 10-foot-high scaffolding. This will form into an enclosure of three walls. The fourth wall is made of cloth, and it's lying on the runway right up there in front, ready to be raised into position. Now I'd like to throw it to Sammy Jackson so he could tell us a little bit about the plane itself. Sammy? Thank you very much, Susan. As Jason mentioned earlier, this is the largest object that anyone has ever attempted to vanish. The weight is an incredible seven tons, and the price is equally incredible, over two million dollars. In addition to this wall, the plane will be surrounded by a human chain. Fifty spectators linked together, making the disappearance of this plane, in my opinion, virtually impossible. There you can see them now, taking their position right around the plane. That switch is a new addition. It controls the lights at the back of the enclosure. When the translucent front wall is up, it will backlight the plane and the people surrounding it. on the translucent front wall so that we can see the plane right up until the moment that it vanishes. I'm sure everyone has a few questions regarding the surroundings or even the airplane itself. So we've invited the vice president of Gates Learjet Corporation, Jim Greenwood, and also the owner of this particular aircraft, Mr. Clay Lacey. Hi, gentlemen. Good evening. First of all, Jim, has this airplane been tampered with in any way? Absolutely not. So it is a genuine aircraft? It's uh, completely operational, Sammy, in every way. Except for one thing. What's that? I've drained all the fuel. He couldn't even fly this aircraft out. Gentlemen, I'm here with Airport Maintenance Supervisor Dick Waters, and I, Dick, I have a few questions for you. Uh, this runway that you and I and, of course, the plane are on, now, it doesn't open up or have any elevators? No, that's correct. It's a solid sheet of asphalt, and it has a Conrock base. Okay. Uh, the plane can't go up, can't go down, right? That's correct. Okay, and it is completely out in the open with 100 feet around it in all directions? Right. Okay, thank you. Straps are being attached to the plane now to lock it into place. Now, I'd like to remind all of you that David's magic is performed with absolutely no camera tricks. The illusion that you are watching right now at home is exactly the way he is doing it now. Ladies and gentlemen, David Copperfield.
There were no camera tricks. No. The illusion was actually before right here. I couldn't believe it. If I'm sitting at home, I could think of some way to get out of it. But <laughs> I was right here, and there's no way that plane could have left. <laughs> well, it there's... did. Ma'am, was that plane here just it a moment sure ago? It was. What happened to it? Uh, it disappeared. What about you, sir? It's, it's just amazing. What happened to the airplane? I don't know. It went. <laughs> it went. It was thrilling. It was shocking. You had chills. What did you think when you when they, they dropped and you took down your blindfold and it was gone? It was incredible. It was incredible. <laughs> can move mountains, but that same power can be applied to man-made objects, objects with considerable power of their own, like an airplane. Now, imagine doing an illusion, an illusion like this, only doing it with a real airliner. To do that, we travel to the modern city of Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. Truly enchanting place. I wanted to do one more piece of magic. Is the model of an Airbus A330. At a length of 57.5 meters and a wingspan of 56 meters, it can fly 231 passengers and their luggage. And just as Gulf Air has created real magic with this aircraft, I'm going to do a little magic of my own by trying to make an actual Airbus A330 magically materialize out of thin air. To better understand exactly what this illusion will look like, check out this computer model. It'll all begin here on the runway of Abu Dhabi International Airport. The illusion will take place here. Our live audience will be positioned here on the far side of these two truss towers. Upon my command, a shield will be raised. I'll radio our helicopter and get one last look from his aerial camera. Chopper 1, let's see your shot. Copy that. This is Chopper 1. You have our shot. All right. Gentlemen, raise the shield. Chopper 1, clear the airspace and stand by for my cue. Remember, what you are watching is live magic. More importantly, what you see at home is being shared with our live audience here on location. All right. Do it now. Oh, yeah. That's it. This is going to be fun. Attempting to make this 65-ton SR-71 seemingly evaporate in broad daylight 
will be one of my most ambitious illusions. Can I do it? Well, you be the judge. We isolated the Blackbird by positioning it in the center of an open airfield. In a moment, I'll conceal it with a parachute. Moments later, if I'm lucky, unlike that rabbit, the Blackbird will be gone. For my next attempt at mega magic, we traveled over 8,000 miles to the kingdom of Bahrain. It's one of 33 gorgeous islands located in the Persian Gulf. Called the Island of Golden Smiles and famous for its saltwater pearls, I traveled here to be part of the annual festival Bahrain Summers, as well as track down a very special flying machine. On our arrival, I was met by the festival's organizers and a six-foot dolphin. This fascinating country is a blend of Eastern and Western cultures with high-rise buildings and traditional dwellings mixed with modern developments and cosmopolitan living. In the capital city of Manama, I performed my live show to enthusiastic sold-out audiences. Arabic is the official language, English is widely understood. Although I've learned that the universal language of magic, well, that's understood by everybody. I thought it would be a cosmic feat to try to create some mega magic with the festival's coolest exhibit. The Russian space shuttle is called the Baran. It means snowstorm. It went into space 25 times. Well, now it's sitting here in Bahrain. I'm going to try to send it on one more mission. This one into another dimension. the orbiter, I've asked an audience of volunteers to form a line behind it. They will become your representatives at home. Most importantly, remember, the illusion you're about to see is accomplished without the aid of any electronic camera trickery. All right, let's do it.
a moment later, and everything will be exactly the same. But there'll be one thing missing. The entire Santa Fe Hotel Casino. So before we get to that, let's go pick up Casey and check out just how big this place really is. This hotel's got a massive casino and a further space which is occupied by the hotel this moment you talk. <laughs> let me guess, you started out making tricycles disappear when you were a kid, eh? You're not too far off. Hey, let me remind you, the camera hasn't stopped rolling. And we're not going to cut away until after the Santa Fe has disappeared. One camera all the way. Now, Casey, remember, you're the eyes and ears to everybody watching this at home. Absolutely. You ready? Uh-huh. Close your eyes. All right. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, Let's do this for real. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Girls, take your place. You did it, Ron. You did it. All right. <laughs> we got it. Seeing is believing. Jerry, how are you going to top that one? <laughs> Casey, there's one more thing we got to do. Yeah. Liz, are you there? Send off your flares. Oh, yeah. A thing of beauty. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. All right. Now what do we do, Jerry? I tell you what. You better put the hotel back. I mean, Paul Loudon and Sue Loudon are nice people, but that's their other hotel. I think it would be wise. To, it's a very nice illusion, but I think they like that place. It cost them a lot to build it. They had a lot of money going there. I mean, it, 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 it's a very important property. Put the ho I, I recommend you put the hotel back, friends. It took them a year and a half to build this the first time. I think I can speed that up a little bit. Do you want me to help you? Uh, excuse me, I think I got it. May I? <laughs> okay. Girls, let's bring this back. Raise the curtain. Now! <laughs> oh, they say seeing is believing. But I see it and I still don't believe it. Congratulations. Hey, thank you. You saved Jerry and me. <laughs> see you, Jerry. That's incredible. Just incredible. Incredible. I mean, I'm talking about...
ask you to do is stay calm. I mean, the worst thing I could do is freak out on this thing. I know, we had a little trouble in the, in the handcuff. We're dangling up here, and we can't get out of the handcuffs, and this thing is going... What if we're still encased in the box? We can't get out of the handcuffs. The smoke bomb does go off. Mm -hmm. We could kick the box open. Yeah, okay. Even you though the magic is screwed, we just can be real careful that you don't kick yourself off the box with it. It is now time for our grand illusion. All right, now, as we told you at the beginning of the program, we are going to climb inside this box where we will be handcuffed together in the box with a timed gas grenade. They will then nail the box shut and we will be elevated to 85 feet. We at that point will try to free ourselves from the handcuffs, get out of the box and try to repel down ropes before the timed gas grenade goes off. Let's now meet the pyrotechnician that invented this gas grenade. His name is Mike Sullivan. Mike? Hey, Mike. What are the dangers that we should watch out for as far as this is concerned? It's a very toxic smoke grenade, and uh, if you breathe it, your lungs will freeze up. Toxic, we would die from it? Yes. Could you demonstrate what the gas Certainly is and what it looks can. like? All right, Mike. Now, in order to do this particular illusion, we had to bring somebody in that has experience with this kind of thing. And we got with a guy who's done this sort of thing before. Please welcome master illusionist, Franz Harari. Yeah. Hey, you guys ready to do this? We're ready. Right. Cool. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> Take your position on the platform. By isolating Mark and Brian off of the tarmac, it enables you to keep track of them at all times throughout the illusion. Guys, take your place. Here comes the handcuffs. That's one. Out. That's two. Okay, guys, nail them in. I'd like to note they'll be making their escape with one hand only, leaving their other hands visible at all times. The reason we chose Van Nuys Airport to do this illusion is it's a vast open area, and there's no way they could make their escape without you detecting it. From this point on, the camera will not stop rolling and will have one continuous take through the completion of the illusion. Now, once the box is raised, I'll pull the pin on the smoke grenade, at which point Mark and Brian will have exactly 25 seconds with which to hopefully make their escape. Okay, bring it up, guys. Again, from this point on, the camera will not cut away. Bring her in, bring her in. Hey, Mark and Brian, I'm getting the smoke grenade. Again, you've got 25 seconds from this point on. Here we go. Take her up. Mark and Brian are trying to release themselves from the handcuffs. At this point, they've got 18 seconds before the smoke bomb will go off. Let's go, guys. Let's do it. Nine seconds. Four, three, two, one. It's fired. Should have been out by now. Guys, just kick the box open. Just kick it open. Forget the handcuffs. Just get out of there. That's it. Bring them down. Lower the crane. Just get them down. It's over.
Well, it was nice to meet you, and welcome to our building. Thank you so much. I know you're going to get along just fine with the girls. The girls? Yeah, Janet and Jack women. <laughs> <laughs> or didn't uh, Jack tell you that he's gay? Uh. <laughs> no, but I think I just figured out what I did wrong. Thank you, Mr. Burns. No, ma'am. Hang on, let me get ready for the party. Uh, yeah, hang on a second, Carrie. Uh, hang on right there. Uh, Mr. Burley, wait. You shouldn't go out with your blindfold on. Why not? I told you I can see right through it. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> Things are good? Things are good. Are yeah. you aware that your duck? We have Fluff Daddy over there. Fluff Daddy. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? What, what, come back here. Come back here. Come out early come back here. Something? We got to get rid of this duck. Excuse Aww. me. Can I, can I try somebody to help us out with a little piece of magic here? You, sir. Come with me. Come with me. Follow me. What's your name? What's your name? Dan. Dan. Come right this way. Big round of applause for Dan. Come on. Dan, right here. Pro Buster. Thank you for dressing up for the show. It's very, very nice. Hold on to this. <laughs> Got this bucket for you. It's empty, empty, empty. Good, Dan. Feel, feel, feel. Good. Hug, hug, hug. The bucket. Perfect. Don't move. Just like that. Webster. Let's do it. Questions? Are there any questions? Do it again! Dan, would you mind doing it again? Come back, Dan, and come back. A little bit of encouragement, a little bit of applause. Dan's gonna do it again. Give me that bucket. It's empty! Empty, empty, empty. Dan, feel, feel. Hug, hug. The bucket. Good, perfect. Just like that. <laughs> 